Welcome everyone. Uh, we're very excited tonight to uh, have joining us Eric Ryan from Irish Distillers, who is going to uh, tell us all about the new Powers Rye launch. Uh, Eric, welcome. Thank you. Uh, maybe for uh, for the benefit uh, of everyone, could you tell us uh, a little bit about your role at Irish Distillers and, and Powers specifically, what you do? Yeah, well, my role is uh, specifically, I specialize in Powers. So it's uh, it's about the, the, the various Powers whiskeys that we have uh, and quality is the name of the game in, in Middleton. And really it's just to maintain that quality of, of distillate and also that quality of whiskey that, that, that goes out the, uh, the doors, I suppose, of, of Middleton Distillery. Um, and I suppose if you're looking at my background, I've been with the distillery since uh, 2010. So I'm uh, approaching the 13 year mark now. Uh, and really for the first 12 and a half, it was all about brewing, distilling, a um, little bit of innovation in the last few years. Uh, and recently enough, I'm starting to specialize a bit more on maturation as well. So uh, that's kind of where I am today. And my, my background is, you know, when I first started in the distillery, it, it was, as a distillery operative uh, and I spent a number of years there but while I was there I studied uh, brewing and distilling with Harriet Watt so I got an MSc in brewing and distilling and then outside of work I suppose uh, I got involved in whiskey societies a bit like yourself so I was actually a founding member of the Cork chapter of the Irish Whiskey Society which was around for must have been about five years for a time so uh, uh, even though it's my job I'm kind of lucky it's it's also my my hobby as well a bit like yourselves. Yeah, great. No, that's um, so you're certainly uh, the man to talk to. We have a lot of Powers fans here, so they're going to be uh, very interested in uh, what you have to say and specifically about the new launch of the Powers Rye, which everybody's very eager to try get their hands on. So um, what can you tell us about uh, the launch in terms of, uh, you know, what it is, age, Task maturation, things like that. Yeah, I, I, I suppose we can, I suppose we could start from the start, really, uh, with the with the right. I mean, the genesis of the whole idea goes back probably, it must be almost ten years at this stage. Um, I, I remember it must have been about twenty thirteen. We had an innovation day with um, a number of of, of colleagues, and uh, I remember actually I championed it myself, I believe. Uh, about using other grains, about you know experimenting with other grains, and at the time I was aware that Middleton and Jameson had used other grains in their mash bills, but at that time I wasn't aware of Powers having used it. Carol Quinn, our archivist at Middleton Distillery, later discovered, uh, well, she discovered a notebook by John Jameson which showed other grains, but she also discovered that Powers had used rye, a sprinkling of rye is what I would say, in the mash bills. So if you go back to maybe Victorian times, 1800s, uh, uh, there was a bit of wheat, there was a, a little bit of rye, and they were kind of used, uh, there was oats as well, but the, the wheat and the rye was almost used as a kind of salt and pepper kind of flavoring agent, I would think. Obviously, the, the rye to give a bit of that peppery flavor, and probably the wheat, to, a bit like salt, it helps to bring out the flavors of the other grains, I would imagine, you know. So once we discovered that, uh, it really got us thinking that, you know, we could do something for powers. Uh, and, you know, there was a lot of experimentation that went on. Um, but first of all, I suppose before we could do the experimentation, we needed rye. We needed a supply of rye because we didn't have that supply. And so it must have been 2015. Um, we were looking for rye for 2015 and we couldn't find a supplier in Ireland that could supply the quantity of rye that we would require. So we actually imported rye from uh, Europe, um, I believe it was Sweden, but that's what we had to do for the first uh, two years of these trials. Um, okay. But we wanted Irish rye. And in the end, what we did is we commissioned uh, Cooney Furlong, uh, who were in Wexford, uh, to actually plant rye fields for us that we then would be able to use for our own rye uh, product. So um, the, the interesting thing about that as well is the rye was uh, planted in Came in, in near Enniscorthy in County Wexford. And the Powers, uh, I suppose, ancestral home is Edermine House. 
uh, which is about 15 kilometers from where this ride grew. So there was a nice synergy with, with powers because of that. Uh, and um, I, I suppose um, that, that kind of, again, made us think this is, this is powers. There's other reasons, but that's another reason. Again, it was in the Mashkills, you know, back in the 1800s. I believe Roy stayed in the Mashkills until the, the early 1950s. Um, it also, you know, was grown near the, the, the ancestral home of the powers. And if you're thinking of the flavor profile of Roy, we all think of, you know, uh, that sp spicy characteristic. And, you know, when you're talking about powers in comparison to some of our other whiskies like Jameson or Middleton or whatever, powers has that spicy character anyway. So there was a bit of synergy with the, with the flavor profile we felt. So it, it, it just seemed like a good fit. Makes sense. <clears throat> yeah. So by 2017, we had complete Irish rye. We had done our experiments as we had, we had brewed rye in the previous years, not Irish rye. We had distilled uh, and put that into maturation, put it into various casks types, and we had monitored the casks as they were maturing to see. So this, we, we, there was the selection of different casks um, with Roy distilled it that went into these casks. And then we were able to um, assess uh, how the Roy distillate was maturing in the different cask types, which was all great because when we then came around to using our Irish Roy and when we did brew it and distill it, we already knew what casks we wanted to use for this. So that was, that was very, very handy. And what, what casks did you and settle on through after doing that experimenting? Yes, yeah, so when, the, the, the experimenting um, was really uh, a lot of American oak casks, uh, as well as uh, sherry butts. Um, and what we settled on uh, and what were the favorites were actually the American oak. It just helped to bring out those rye flavors a bit more. Mm -hmm. um, so what the selection was is actually um, virgin American oak, refill uh, virgin American oak casks, first fill ex bourbon and refill bourbon. So we've got four different types, uh, okay. two which had that influence of bourbon previously, but two types which didn't have that influence of bourbon. They were only influenced by um, Irish whiskey or not influenced at all in the case of the Virgin uh, American oil cask. Okay, great. Um, that's interesting. And then, and so the, the whiskey itself is, uh, no, it's a non-age statement whiskey, but we're talking. Uh, yeah, you're talking. Type, yeah, type so I was look, yeah, I was looking at the, 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 the cast mix that went in and, and I was looking at some of the ages, 4.75, 4.85, 4.9. It was very close to five years old. So it's, it's, you know, in and around that age. But, you know, with this whiskey, it's not really about the age. We were monitoring this um Rye whiskey as it was maturing, so especially once once it went past the three years, um, and we just felt it had got to the point where there was a nice marriage of the flavors from the rye, and also coming that that matured sweetness that you get from the American oak. Um, so we didn't want it to go overly oaked and take away from the rye flavor. So I, we think we've got a nice sweet spot there between the distillate and the wood. And if you know powers, as I know you do, Alan. That's what we always try to achieve with powers is to leave the distillate talk as much as the wood. So would that have influenced uh, why it's being released now? You know, meaning if if you had determined it needs more time in the wood, you know, we'll wait till next year to, to launch this kind of thing, but it was ready, so let's go with it. Yeah, you're hitting the nail on the head. That's exactly it. It's you're 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 assessing it, uh, you're excited because there was a lot of excitement around this and you know you want it to be right and basically your the assessments have been made uh, sensory assessments and then okay we really want to start moving on this because it's it's really good you know <laughs> so um if you leave it if you leave it that bit longer it, it, it no because that's going to mean it's not going to mean it's going to get bad but it's going to maybe go towards what we weren't looking for uh, we wanted some of that rye flavor, lots of that rye flavor, actually, to come through. Yeah, and I suppose, too, you get the added benefit of kind of being first to market 
you know, with uh, an Irish rye um, before, because with all the experimenting going on with others, there's always that potential too, I suppose. There is, there is. And I, I, I'm not, I don't think that was our reason for now coming out with the rye. Um, mm -hmm. As you know, that it, it's brilliant. Uh, you know, I, I, as much as yourselves, uh, I love uh, seeing all the new distilleries in Ireland, seeing all the new whiskies, all the experimentation, the innovation, and, you know, uh, whether it's within the technical file or outside the technical file, it's amazing and it's great to see because, you know, 20 years ago, I, I mean, really, even 10 or 15 years ago, the variety out there was probably 10% of what it is now. And, uh, you know, the more choice there is for the consumer, the better. But for us, I don't think it dictated our decisions because we actually started this process about nine years ago. The idea was kind of 10 years ago and then nine years ago looking for your rye. And so it's been going on a long time before it now hits the shelves, you know. So um, you, you, you probably you might have tried uh, the Meta and Madness rye and malt. Mm -hmm. So that would have been kind of, I suppose, the earlier experiments uh, because Meta okay. and Madness is our experimental brand. So it, it went through there first, but it didn't go through there as a full rye. It went as a malt and rye. Um, that was outside the technical file, actually. Uh, it wasn't a single malt. It wasn't a rye whiskey. Right. But it was still an amazing whiskey and something different. And, you know, so that's, that's the whole genesis of where do we go now? And uh, this is where we go now. Uh, I suppose create a, a whole new category almost for the Irish whiskey um, uh I suppose the the technical file really. There's four there's four subcategories, and maybe we've added one more with uh, <laughs> with Paul's Irish Rye, you know. Would you say that ten years ago, when kind of when the process was started, you didn't definitely know that it was going to come as a exclusively an I, a, a Rye, meaning it could have been through the experimenting that it's just going to be a component of maybe a pot still release or or something of that. It, yeah, you, know, well, you didn't determine it until you kind of had experimented. Yeah, I think what determines it in the end is taste, and you know, it's uh, it could have it could have uh, been something like that. Uh, you know, it it uh, as you're assessing it and your your the idea, you know, ideas are mooted and it, uh, opinions change, and you know, so always it's um, an evolving process for innovation, but uh, this whiskey was so good it, it took a while to start kind of pushing that flavor out so uh, immediately we weren't sure but it matures beautifully in the casks and then we realized right. wow this is actually getting so much better so you know quickly uh, and it, it really evolved very well so i suppose then we were moving towards you know maybe first days we weren't sure but as 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 it matured we're moving towards this has to go on its own this is amazing you know, and that's okay. That's where, great. We, that's where we ended up, I think. Okay, uh, maybe a, a, another stepping back for a second on the rye specifically. Can you talk to uh, just the process of working with rye as opposed to the other grains that you've you know t have worked with before? And you know, is this a once a year thing? How often are you going to you know distill it? Because I I've heard interesting stories from others that have worked with rye in the past and how it you know affects their all the, all the machinery and everything so they they try to do it once a year or that kind of thing yeah i mean the thing it is a it is a challenging grain uh, in comparison to let's say barley or in comparison to let's say maize or corn as they might say in the states mm -hmm. but um like for example, uh, it, it, it's high beta glucan um, levels, and that 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 can it can make it quite sticky, um, and it 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 means that you know you you're not able to process as as much through your 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 brew house as normal. So we'd have we have we have to reduce the throughput in order to accommodate roy, um, and as well as that, uh, I suppose downstream. Uh, in your feeds recovery, uh, it's a bit more challenging as well. For example, when we're producing syrup for animal feed, that syrup uh, is that bit more viscous and your pumps are all put under a bit more pressure. And, you know, you just have to kind of manage it carefully. Um, but I kind of think that the rewards are worth it uh, mm -hmm. in the end. And with regard to, I suppose, when we do Roy campaigns, uh, generally we'd, fight, we'd, we'd like to fit in one 
right campaign per season, let's say, or per year, as you'd say, really. Um, and that means then we get it all done in one go because it's, uh, I suppose, we have to empty out the, the, all of the systems. We have, to, we have to clean all the systems before we bring in the ROI. And afterwards, when we're finished, the same thing again. And then the processing itself, it takes longer um, uh, to process uh, the ROI. Um, and then, you know, we give it more time as well in fermentation. Uh, so overall, it is, um, I suppose, I suppose, yeah, you could say if it was all about efficiencies, we wouldn't bother with ROI. <laughs> yeah. But what I would say is it's all with this whiskey, it's all about flavor and uh, it's worth the effort, I think. And is the plan that this this will be part of the, the permanent core range of, of powers? Yes, thank God. <laughs> you know, th thankfully, it's it's a permanent uh, uh, expression in the range, which I, I'm delighted about. And it, it's kind of would it be fair to say it's it's slotting in? Um, you know, kind of between the gold and the three swallow from a maybe a price point. Uh, we, yes, but, but only slightly. Uh, I don't think there's uh, going to be a, uh, much of a margin above gold. So okay. I think it's going to be very. Um, uh, I think it's going to be great value for the flavor. Yeah. Uh, when it goes out there on the shelves and. Uh, I think it won't last long on the shelves. I'm just worried that there'll be too much demand. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say, you know? from a, given what you were saying about the process of working with the rye, from a, and I don't know if you can tell us this, but what's the bottling uh, run that you would, you know, you're doing for this relative to what you do, say, for the gold? Is it? I'm, I'm assuming it's much more limited. I'm not sure of the exact figures, but it's it's far less uh, yeah. you know it's it is limited uh definitely um but you know if something's really popular and, and there's demand then you're going to have to try and ramp up to meet that you know so um for this it, it, it would be a challenge because um you know it, that roy campaign that we do would have to be increased uh, the cask mix that we use is, is is very special actually uh and you know that that would need to be catered to but you know that would be a great thing. You know, I'd love, yeah. to, we'd love to see it being very popular. You might need to plant more, more rye in Wexford too. Exactly, <laughs> yeah. And the interesting thing about the rye as well, you know, it wasn't, um, you know, 2016, I think, was it the first one? Um, it wasn't really a commercial crop rye in Ireland. It had died out. So back maybe, I don't know, 100 years ago, um, it would have been uh, more common as a crop. Uh, so, uh, more distilleries would have used it. Uh, I believe it was used to patch um cottages and, okay. and buildings etc um because it's got longer straw and it's it's a bit stronger um yeah. and they and you know it, it, it was it was a bit more common in ireland but it died out and uh, basically to the point of you know not being a commercial crop but since we've done this it's grown in popularity uh and uh, it's it's um i believe there's about 3500 hectares now on the rye which is a massive increase of what it was back in 2016, which was probably a couple of hundred. And I believe we have, we have about 90 hectares ourselves for this project. So, you know, I suppose we've sparked off something there. Um, but a lot of it is used now as well for animal feed. Apparently it's um, it's good for the muscle development of the animals that compared to other grains and things like that. So uh, I'm not saying that Roy drinking powers Roy will give you muscles, but <laughs> eating the uh, eating the uh, the actual Roy for the uh, animals it gives them muscles. There you go. That's a good future marketing campaign. Uh, <laughs> the so the sourcing of the rye from uh, Wexford is that a uh, exclusive? That's your source and it's not being sourced to anyone else. That might yeah, be that's, to use rye. That's exclusively for us, but yeah, okay. um, that's not to say that Roy is not now available to other distilleries. And I know that other distilleries are experimenting or planning to experiment with Roy. Right. So um, yeah, I'd say that I'd, hopefully we'll see some more, um, you know, from from other distilleries. But what I guess to the it makes the Powers Rye more unique. It's unique yeah, already, like, but the fact is this rye is only you know going to be in the powers right it's not going to be finding its way into somebody else's blend or anything like that 
No, 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 they wouldn't. Uh, yeah. This is specifically ours. And, you know, another reason why we went with Powers, Powers is, it's, you know, it's known as a brand of firsts, I, I suppose. Um, it was, you know, Powers were the first um, uh, distillery in Dublin, the famous Dublin distilleries to bottle in-house themselves. Mm-hmm. Powers were the first distillery in the world uh, to release uh, a mini bottle, which yep. was the... Um, half kill at the time, the imperial measure, which would, would be about 71 mil now, and that was the baby powers. So I suppose whenever you're on an aeroplane or in a hotel and you get to sample your little mini spirit, you can thank powers for that because they were the first in the world to right. introduce it. And uh, everybody else jumped onto that boat. And um, so we might see some more pow- uh, some more uh, rye, people jumping on the rye boat as well, but we're the first. Thank yeah, you. I would think it's going to be very popular, you know, one power's popularity, but rye, particularly here in the States, is, you know, really uh, made a strong comeback as well. Um, do you th- And assuming that that popularity uh, does happen, potential for use of rye into either, a, you know, a single pot still or you know, different varieties or, or maybe even a, an older age statement ride down the road, you know, if, if it proves to be as popular as we think it will be. I'd love to see that, but, uh, you know, anything can happen, but at the moment, you know, I, yeah, you know, first whiskey, first, right? we got to get I just, this one on the yeah, shelves yeah. first. <laughs> I, just, I mentioned there how far back this kind of goes, maybe 10 years. Uh, so yeah. there's, there's always lots in the pipeline, but unfortunately I can't reveal anything uh, until the company are ready to reveal it. You yeah. Know? So, yeah, I was trying to catch you in a week. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well, I was going to say, so it's, it's, you know, another thing too. So this is a, it's part of the core, you know, range. Um, but if it's super popular, like we think it might be, it may become very scarce very quickly. So it's buy it while you can, because you may have to wait till the next harvest. That's, that's what I, <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's what I'm worried about as well. I have to yeah. say, um, you know, so, uh, especially in Ireland, uh, it's going to be, you know, limited and, you know, people need to get their hands in it as, as quickly as possible, you know. I'll be looking to get my hands on a few bottles as well as soon as I see it on shelves. Yeah, uh, we're, we're all, uh, you know, certainly looking forward to when it's on shelves. And luckily, we, we get have the benefit of being able to try it tonight with the, uh, the baby, baby rye power. So, um, uh, so it's great. Andrew, any uh, other thoughts questions before i um yeah eric just wanted to um ask about obviously one of the one of the things we talk about a lot with whiskey is it's it's abv or it's proof uh, as the measurement oh. here is in the states Thank so you. you know you've bought you've bottled this one at um i correct 43.2 yeah, yeah that's right so just, and, and obviously it's you know it says it on the label as well um non chill filtered so we just love to know the thinking behind that Basically, it's, uh, I mentioned it a few times, it's about the flavor. Um, so we, uh, we, we, you know, we sat down, this would have been last year, uh, the sensory panel, you know, Kevin O'Gorman, the, the blenders, you know, um, uh, Finbar Curran in the maturation team, you know, a number of us sat down and basically assessed it. Uh, and we assessed the, the Roy at different strengths. So there would have been 40%, uh, 43 Point two percent, forty six, I think we did, and fifty percent, which is the the hundred proof American style. So that was something that kind of attracted us to, to maybe fifty percent. But we came, I suppose, to the agreement that forty three point two for us gave the best um, array of flavors, while having lots of that. I suppose clove would be the best description. I would say that spice, that clove spiciness. Uh, from the rye, um, the matured sweetness from the oak, nicely balanced, and um, on the mouth, the a good, a, a strong mouthfeel, uh, you know, viscous. And, you know, with pot still, we talk a lot about that. So mm-hmm. we, we are always interested in mouthfeel. Um, the thing about rye is rye can have a drying um, sensation in the mouth. So it was important for us with the cask mix to try and bring in some of that mouthfeel to, uh, to enhance that. And we think 43.2 actually was probably the best for that mouthfeel. Um, so for us, it's probably what we feel is the best presentation of the whiskey if you drink it straight without any water yourself. 
And, and I was going to say that, that ABV that's going to hold up well too in cocktails, you know, for making Manhattans. You know, exactly. Which are, yeah. You know, so and, that, that works. And I'm 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 really really chuffed that we have a whiskey in the power stable that can, you know, be quite affordable and be so good in cocktails, um, or with a cube of ice because I, I mentioned that I I I got um. A little sample bottle of Dave McCabe there before Christmas. What I wanted to do is try it, try it straight, try it neat, try it with uh, maybe in an old fashioned or a Manhattan, and also try it with some ice. And it works with all of them, you know. Right. And you know, Jameson has Black Barrel for me, which is probably one of the best for cocktails. Well, Powers for me now has uh, has Powers Rye, which is uh, I think is uh, it's a a big coup for for Powers. Great. Well. You know, we're going to be enjoying uh, the Irish built Manhattan cocktails uh, yes. using that. So, uh, unfortunately, no, uh, uh, tonight I'm actually having a, a John's Lane old fashioned. Well, it's not, a, it's not unfortunate, but yeah, I was going to say, know, there's nothing unfortunate about that, <laughs> <laughs> which is quite nice having, you know, but uh, you know, the, the, the Roy, um, it would be, it would have been nice to have the Roy uh, on this call. Well, soon enough, I was going to say, you'll have to hoard a few bottles in case they do sell out quick definitely uh, andrew anything else that i left yeah. out no i think um i think eric you've, you've ticked all the boxes for us in terms of sourcing production you know and going the historical element um yeah i think yeah i think we've we've got more i than... think I, I think the one thing as well that i didn't mention which is yeah. which is interesting you know it is a hundred percent right but um the 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 malted element is also malted rye which is uh, you know i like when we initially did the first um two rye campaigns uh, we used it malt we used malted barley um so not for the powers rye but this would have went into metal and madness um but when we wanted to do 100% rye we had to have malted rye so it's a nice uh, added element to the story of this whiskey, and then you're able to say it's 100% right. Um, so that was um, that was unusual for us and uh, exciting as well at the same time, um, and challenging as well. But you know, it, it worked well, uh, and uh, you know, between you know between the earlier experiments, uh, I think we're, we're 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 getting very familiar with it. Um, you know, we're into a few seasons of it now at this stage, um, and what we do is we we can vary the uh, the malt content to, to, to help us in our brewing. Um, but for me, I think it probably adds a bit more to the right flavor in the end whiskey. And, and I might have missed this earlier. This year, is this being done through pot stills or column stills? Yeah, so this, this goes through column stills. And uh, we decided to use column stills uh, because, you know, for us, Roy is an American style of whiskey. Uh, and looking at the history of powers, uh it was always pot still whiskey until the 1950s and in 1958 in john's lane distillery they installed um column stills and what they were experimenting with was to make a north american style of whiskey uh so the i suppose the trials and the experimentation and the innovation that they did there in the late 1950s that all i suppose made its way into the design of the distillery I work in today. So the 1975 New Middleton Distillery uh, was based on those experiments and trials. And uh, I even saw the drawings and I saw, um, you know, the engineers reports from back then, and they actually referred to it as a North American style of distilling. So for, for Irish distilling at the time, this was a new departure. The column stills had been used in Ireland as far back as the 1830s. But it was coffee stills, you know, NAS Coffee, he was the guy who invented the coffee still, an Irishman. They were used by many distilleries, but a different style of whiskey. When it eventually went to America, the technology was improved on. And uh, I, I, I would say by the 1950s, the Americans had, were producing a really good style of whiskey, which was better than what you could get from a coffee still. The powers really introduced that into Irish distilling via the 1975 Middleton Distillery. And I suppose as a nod to that, and the fact that Roy 
is, a, you know, it's considered an, a North American style of whiskey. We decided we wanted to try and put it through those original 1975 column stills. It's in the Barry Crockett still house. Uh, that's what it's called today. You know, Barry Crockett was our master distiller for about, you know, 40 Long years, time. I think, before yeah. he retired. The interesting thing about Barry is Barry, you know, he started in, I think it was 1966 um, with um, Cork Distilleries Company at the time. But when Powers and Jameson and Cork Distilleries Com Company amalgamated, um, he then became part of that company. And as part of his, I suppose, learning as a distiller, he was actually sent up to Powers in Dublin for six months to learn about distilling. So he, he obviously learned about pot distilling, but while he was up there, he also learned about column distilling the powers way. And that's what was brought down to, uh, to Middleton. And it's a nod to that history as well. Uh, and I suppose uh, by going through the columns as well, uh, it's, we were looking for different kinds of flavors. We were look, we were targeting that kind of clove flavor that you get in rye. And sometimes it's easier to target that in a column still than it is in a pot still. So that was the thinking behind it. And when we tasted it, tasted it, we felt we had, you know, nailed it. So that's what we kept doing. Oh, great. All right, well, I thank you very much for taking a few minutes with us tonight. I know um, you guys have a lot, lot going on and the launch coming up. Um, so we're uh, looking forward to it and we look forward to uh, talking with you down the road. Yeah, it was very good to talk to yourselves. Thanks, Alan. Thanks, Andrew. And hopefully uh, we'll see each other in person sometime and have a power drive. <laughs>